Alright guys, so this one might be a little quicker, ideally, but I'm really liking the the Venom Gyre build, uh, and I'm going to show what I did, and it might only work this league to get some more damage going on it. Um, I, you can see I'm still on Wasp Nest, but the, the damage is feeling better, and it's mostly because of Alberon's Warpath boots, the replica Alberon's Warpath. They give... Uh, 180 chaos damage per 50 strength, so we're kind of doing a strength stacking assassin. Um, there might be some better skills to do the strength stacking thing on. Uh, it looks like Scourge Arrow Siege Ballista, Siege Ballista, Shrapnel Ballista. Uh, one of the two um, is pretty popular. Uh, Cyclone people are using with strength stacking and using a mace that gives you big AOE um, as like Slayer or Juggernaut type of things um, and even like Pestilent Strike with Pathfinder is using it and it seems pretty good uh, like most of the damage you want is chaos damage anyway cannot deal non-chaos damage is almost a buff for us because then we can do Fizz Reflect maps just fine um, but yeah, so that's been the main change. I got a six link real cheap, like 10C or something, just with some life on it. Um, and then the other upgrades are just based on trying to get more strength. You can see I, I've only got 700. And even with that, like the only things with strength on it are this. I got a pretty nice belt and used the catalyst to get it up. Um, which this was actually pretty cheap also. It was only like 20C. Astromantis was 20C. Um, Attribute Catalysts are like six for one chaos, so pretty cheap. And then these gloves were like 5C, just strength and life. Uh, and I'm still on the same wasp's nest. Still have missed wall, though with the strength stacking thing, this seems much worse. And it's probably first on the list to change. Star Conjures could also probably be something much better uh, since we want strength, um, but they're still here. Obviously, if the chest had strength, or if it was belly of the beast, I think it'd be much better. Um, and then we got our flask to where they need to be. Um, which fire blue brew is nice because I don't have any. I'm not using despair. Um, if the amulet was in presence for despair, then this is less necessary. Um, the big two are Coralitos and uh, Ed Series Promise um, are both like the Coralitos is a big damage increase uh, Ed Series Promise is a little bit of damage increase but uh, that's mostly it so not too much changed on gear the strength stacking thing is actually pretty cheap to get um, quite a bit of just flat damage to it in POB, it pretty much doubled my damage just by making those couple changes. Um, and so losing Pierce from Voidwalkers now made me just drop four points to get this. You can do some clever stuff with uh, putting a Thread of Hope here, and it lets you hit Piercing Shots and Hunter's Gambit, which is um, Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. And I think there's something else. I think the chance to blind on hit. Something else I think you hit that's good around here. Oh, maybe it's phase acrobatics you can get without having to take all these. Um, and then so largely we're, we move some stuff around to get more strength. So inertia converts dex to strength. So we picked up these accuracy ones. Since we're losing a lot of dex, we do want more accuracy. Uh, all of this is big decks, so this gives us a whole bunch of strength on its own. Um, we shifted a couple points here just to be in these circles. And then this one's also giving us a lot of strength from, like this would have given decks, all these random travel points are giving decks. This would have given 10 decks, 10 strength. So um, we get a lot of value out of these, uh, like decks to strength conversion duel jewels. Um, I, Wind Dancer is less big now because we're less invested in invasion and dodging stuff. Um, 
still kind of nice, like prevents you from getting one shot around a corner sometimes, but uh, I could also see dropping it at this point. And then I have a lot of these like life points put in and potentially those could shift to more damage, especially if we got a belly of the beast, but I'm trying to get as close to 5k health as I can. And just as you're able to invest in better gear, like if these rings had strength, if your shield had strength or life, um, if your helm had strength, not only would we get more DPS off of our boots, but we get more life, we can kind of shift around some of these points to be either more DPS focused if we want, or some utility stuff, like just little move speed things that are close. Um, so uh, by no means is this perfect or um, like the best way to build this, but it it works and I think this is a tree that requires the least investment. Like obviously this we didn't have to invest in any like special jewel to jump over here. Um, and same with putting more points into life. So uh, I think last time I ran like a tier 8 or tier 10 somewhere in there. So um, so this is a tier 13 and we're just going to run it. Uh, I'm not going to throw anything on it right now. And the playstyle is largely the same. Um, the damage feels much better. Um, but it's still the poison thing where you only need to hit a few times and then move on, um, which you'll see from me running this. I'm pretty terrible at. Like, honestly, I probably shouldn't be playing a poison build because it's hard for me to want to move past things before they're dead. Um, I probably shouldn't have picked up the shrine to display the build because it's going to give me a little unfair thing. But but the general concepts there um, were, were similar to what we were before, spectral throw type of setup where you throw things out, they come back. We get a little uh, DPS boost off of whirling blades throwing more uh, shurikens or blades out. Um, all right, here we go. The thing's off, so now my clear speed's actually fair. So if you haven't played a poison build, the uh, kill stuff or hit things and then let it die is kind of a pain sometimes. Uh, I'd say turn your sound up a bit to make sure you hear any like dings or drops that are falling. But if you're used to playing this game fast, which just I'm not, I usually will usually play relatively slow. Um, it's just kind of a weird thing. Um, so single targets probably one of the things this lacks with little, but um, you can see it's still not bad. Uh, and the DPS you'll see in POV is only counting the outgoing projectile. So it does uh, about 25% of its damage on its way back too. So it, if you're just looking at the outgoing projectile in POB, it's almost like we have a 25% more multiplier on top of that. Um, and the bonus we get too is we're applying poisons much quicker. So uh, we get damage bonuses based on how many poisons we've applied recently. And since we have a 100% chance to poison, each time we throw a Venom Gyre, we're getting a lot of poisons. And the blades poison on the way back, so uh, our damage ramps up a lot more than what you'll see in POB. And you can put like some silly high numbers to kind of boost that and see how high it goes. Um, like the number of poisons that you've inflicted recently. But um, e even on the conservative end, you get like uh, a little under 1 million. I think putting like 10, which is rather low, even if you only have one boss, uh, puts it at like 700,000 or something, and that's with no flasks. So, I don't know, to me, to me it feels really good, and that's 700,000 on the outgoing only, the returning is like 200,000, 
150,000, somewhere in there. So, uh, again, with like fairly low investment, like I said, my I'm using Wasp Nest, which is a, a 1C claw, and my six link chest is like a 10C chest that's uh, that's just got life on it. Um, rings just have resist, no special damage or strength on them. Um, Star Conjures is 1C, 2C. Uh, this with 17% strength was like uh, 15 C, and I think because it's getting more popular, uh, the price has been going up. Also, replica things are just a little more rare. Um, I think the belt was like 30 C as well, but that's partly because I wanted to have something that was better than Cyclopean Coil. And you can get a reasonable Cyclopean Coil for, um, I don't know, a relatively low range, 10 ish C. So for a, about 1x, you can put this whole build together um, and just start doing stuff. Uh, with more investment, you can really push the strength. I'm sure you you guys have seen like crazy amulets or like chests with flat strength and percent strength and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's easy to get strength on shields as well. Um, and then at some point, uh, potentially it's worth investing into like iron reflexes or something. You can definitely pivot into different stuff with this build. A lot of the, the ranger builds just go down into this area to get more of the health. Um, and the health along here, there's just a lot of strength in there. And you can kind of leave out some of this top area, even though you lose a lot of damage off this crit stuff. Um, potentially, you get enough tankiness to balance it out, tankiness and then some damage out of like this poison multiplier thing, and then you get just more strength over here, some more damage. Uh, but that's mostly it. I just wanted to give a brief update um, I got pretty excited about this transition into strength stacking because um, you, you just get a lot more health. Um, but yeah, any, any questions, let me know. I think the next big upgrade now is hitting a, a good claw. And there's some that are, are really great. The focus now is getting one with big attack speed. Um, like attack speed and crit become more important than the fizz damage since since we're relying more on this flat damage than we are on our claws fizz damage um, and I think Venom Gyre doesn't convert any fizz damage so uh, for for Venom Gyre specifically we really don't care about the fizz damage of our claw um, so we're trying to find something that has uh, flat added chaos damage and there is a um, a heist base that's implicit is flat chaos damage. So you can get some really good stuff going um, that'll basically just double your DPS um, or, or more even. Um, getting like some of these crazy claws with, with a huge amount of chaos damage, like tier 1 chaos damage and tier 1 attack speed, you're damage like doubles what we're doing here so um yeah the, the build seems good um obviously i haven't done like tier 16 maps uh, i happen to find a couple and might just try one to see how it goes i imagine uh with under 5k life and just base like dodge amounts i'll get one shot uh, once in a while um but the nice thing about this compared to something like Pestilent Strike is you get to play more evasive and you can like just fit like physically dodge attacks a little easier, stay away from packs. Um, so it lends itself to like doing harder content if you can play safe. But that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying this skill over uh, some of the other things. Maybe I just got a little tired of Charge Dash, but I, I'll probably jump back to that at some point. But, uh, yeah. You have any questions, let me know. It's probably the fifth time I said that, but who's watching the end of the video? Alright, well, thanks, guys, and I'll catch you later.